Hi guys, Jeremy here again from tacticalclassroom.com. Today we're going to be looking at a, uh, another common wind formula used by long range shooters. Um, and this one is known as the BC wind formula. And it is based on the, um, the ballistic coefficient of your projectile. So um, let's crack on. By way of overview, uh, this is going to be a PowerPoint lesson. Uh, explaining the concept of the BC wind formula and how to use it. Uh, there will be some practical exercises included during the lesson, so make sure you've got uh, a pen and some paper ready. Uh, by way of object objectives, uh, by the end of this lesson, uh, you'll be able to demonstrate an understanding of the BC wind formula and how to use it to quickly account for wind deflection. So what's a wind formula? Uh, wind formulas are quick and easy to remember wind formulas, or oh, sorry, quick and easy formulas that are e easy to remember, um, that allow us as shooters to quickly determine an approximate wind adjustment or hold off uh, to account for wind deflection. Okay, simplicity is king. You know, uh, these formulas generally avoid complex mathematics and stick to sort of elementary school junior high school mathematics, so we're talking multiplication tables, times tables, whatever you, whatever you call them. Uh, in terms of uh, limitations, uh, they're not minute of angle accurate, um, you know, so not ideal for competition shooters and so on, but certainly minute of man or minute of bad guy accurate, so ideal for tactical, military, um, even long range hunting, you know, uh, where where time is critical, you don't have time to um, ascertain your exact uh, hold, or your exact uh, adjustment you need to dial on. And so um, these are quick and, I suppose, a quick and dirty um, way to get uh, a pretty accurate um, adjustment. Okay. So yeah, okay, probably not ideal for competition shooting, but uh, they are pretty close, normally within a click or two. And um, obviously, you know, the, like most wind formulas, they incorporate a, a wind speed estimate that we provide. Uh, if we misread the wind, then of course, you know, the formula is going to be off, or the the the, um, the solution provided by the formula is going to be off. So, um, you know. As always with long range shooting, wind's, wind's, um, wind's probably our worst enemy. And uh, at the end of the day, any wind any wind speed that we apply to the formula is basically a best guess or an educated guess on our behalf. So, um, you know, if we fired and we were, we were slightly off, you know, did we make a mistake with the wind speed estimate or was it the formula? You know what I'm saying? So, um, the easiest way to explain it is we'll first look at how it works. So. Uh, the BC wind formula is based on the first number from the G1 BC of your bullet. So uh, G1 references the, the drag curve of your bullet. Um, and so it's a G1 profile. So for example, you know, a, three and a, a 308 SMK, 175 grain, has a BC, uh, if it's below, if it's travelling below 2800 feet per second, uh, of 0.496. Uh, the 168 grain is even lower, so still in the 0.4s though. So, um, for example, a 308 firing SMK round a projectile becomes a four gun. So you use that that first number of the BC of the G1 BC, uh, which is obviously four. So you ignore the decimal, and uh, that becomes the I suppose the value of the gun. So the gun value. Okay, uh, and it's from there. It's also based on uh, a series of constants that are based on the range to target, and of course your rifle slash ammo data. So whatever your range card or range tables uh, tell you. Okay. Um, so at 100 meters, it becomes 0 0.1. 200 meters, 0 0.2. 300 meters, 0 0.3, and so on until you get to 600 meters, where it becomes 0 0.7. Okay. At, uh, at 700 meters, it becomes 0 0.8. 800 meters, it becomes 1. 900 meters, 1 1.2. And 1,000 meters, 
Okay, so these these are constants here. They they relate to my data. So um, so you know they might not match whatever you're shooting, uh, but you can tweak it so it does match yours. You just um, go through the formula using these constants, and then you check it against your your rifle data at that at that range and at that wind speed. And if it's if it's off, you just adjust the constant. You know, for example, at 900 meters, your constant might be 1.1. It might be 1.3. Uh, it might be one, you know what I'm saying. So uh, run the formula and check the answer against your range card data or your ballistic table data. And if it's slightly off, then adjust the constant, rerun the formula, and uh, until such time as it's um, very close to what your range data is telling you, um, and then you'll have a constant that you can uh, memorize and use going forward. So probably the easiest way for you to um, to learn it is we'll go run through some examples and then you guys can do some uh, do some practical exercises. So in the first example, we're running with a seven mile an hour wind at 500 meters. Okay, so four, that's our BC number, so that's our gun number. So four goes into seven how many times? Okay, so it goes in once with a remainder of three. Okay, so because it goes in once, we go, uh, one multiplied by our range constant, so for 500 meters it's 0.5, and then of course we have to take into account the remainder, so 0.5 plus 0.3 for the remainder gives us 0.8 of a mil. Okay, uh, if you're feeling a little bit confused, rewind the tape, run it again, um, but it uh, should become pretty self explanatory, so it's quite easy uh, once you get your head around it. Um, and we'll progress to example two now, and hopefully that'll um, cement things for you. So example two, okay, we've got a 13 mile an hour wind at 700 meters. Okay, so we've got our four gun, which goes into 13, because that's our wind speed. So 14 goes into 13 uh, three times with a remainder, remainder of one. Okay, so three, to, so three times multiplied by 0.8, because that is our range constant for 700 meters, gives us an answer of 2.4. Okay, and then of course we've got the remainder to deal with. So 2.4 plus 0.1 for our remainder equals 2.5 mils. Okay, so with the remainder, uh, initially obviously it's a whole number. So in this example, you know, four goes into 12 three times, which is 12, with a remainder of one. So that one then becomes a decimal just for the purpose of the uh, formula. But it's um, very, very simple once you, once you understand how it works and obviously quite quick to work out. All right, guys, your turn. Um, question one for you. You're dealing with a five mile an hour wind at 400 meters, okay? What is your adjustment slash hold for wind deflection? So pause the video at this point, run through the formula, and then once you have an answer that you're comfortable with, unpause the video and check it against my result. All right, so here's our answer. So four gun goes into five once with a remainder of one. Okay, so one multiplied by our constant, which is 0.4 equals 0.4. And then 0.4 plus our remainder of 0.1 gives us 0.5 of a mil, so half a mil. All right, guys, your turn, uh, question two. Uh, in this scenario, you're dealing with a nine mile an hour wind at 600 meters. So what is your adjustment slash hold for wind deflection? Once again, pause the video at this point, run through the formula, and uh, once, you've, once you're happy with your answer, unpause the video and check your answer against mine. Right, so once again, four gun goes into nine twice, this time with a remainder of one. Okay, so two multiplied by our range constant for 600 meters, which we know is 0.7, equals 1.4. We can take our 1.4 and we add our remainder, which is 0.1, which gives us an answer of 1.5 mils. Right, nice work. Let's crack on to question three. Right, in this scenario, you're dealing with a 20 mile an hour wind at 1,000 meters. What is your adjustment slash hold for wind deflection? Pause the video at this point, run the formula, and then uh, come back to me 
and check your answer against mine. So once again, four gun goes into 25 times with uh, no remainder. Okay, so five multiplied by our range constant, uh, which we know is 1.4, gives us seven mils. Because there's no remainder, we ignore that uh, for that final step. So our firing solution is seven mils, a seven mil hold or a seven mil um, windage adjustment. Okay, so pretty simple formula. Uh, once you get your head around, uh, once you get your head around it, um, if you're still not 100%, rewind the video, watch it again. But um, it is it is not a hard formula to get your head around, uh, and it's it's quite quick, obviously, and um, it'll certainly get your your rounds close enough to where they need to be. Right. So recapping, uh, we looked at the BC wind formula. We talked about the limitations and, of course, how to use it. Uh, we provide you a couple of examples there of the uh, BC wind formula, and then, of course, you completed some of your own using that same formula. So, in conclusion, uh, at this point, you know you should be able to explain that wind formula um, to other people, and, of course, explain its limitations to them also. You've demonstrated your knowledge of the formula by uh, hopefully successfully completing those um, those three those three questions within this uh, within this lesson. Okay, uh, your next step is to take it out to the range and of course uh, shoot it. Okay, now yeah, like any formula, it's only as good as the uh, the inputs. So obviously, first thing first step is making sure those constants that you have uh, match your your rifle and ammunition um, data. So if you've got a range table or a ballistics table for your gun, run the formula with the constants that I've provided here. If they don't quite work, um, tweak the constant until it does work and matches matches your range card data. Okay, then, then it's just a case of going to the range, uh, estimating your wind speed, running through the formula and then applying that hold or applying that uh, windage adjustment and then uh, sending rounds down range and seeing how it pans out. At the end of the day, if your if your wind speed uh, estimate is out, then of course the formula is going to be slightly out as well. So, um, like anything, you know, when you come when it comes to long range shooting, wind's wind's sort of the bane of our existence. Um, but um, you know, the, the only way to get good at reading the wind is to is to shoot the wind and do it do it frequently. So, get out there, get to the range, uh, and do some shooting. Okay. Uh, questions. So, if you've got any questions related to this video or any of the other stuff that uh, that we're doing here at Tactical Classroom, send me an email, Jeremy at tacticalclassroom.com. Alternatively, flick over to the website, tacticalclassroom.com, and uh, use the contact form to get in touch with me. Um, happy to answer any questions um, and so on. So, feel free to get in touch. Uh, in terms of this video, I hope you found it uh, beneficial, uh, and um, if you did. You know, give us the thumbs up, the like, give us the share. I, you know, I'd really appreciate it if you guys could do that for me.